Come in, ocean sailor. Come in, ocean sailor. The Ocean Sailor Podcast. Brought to you by Ocean Sailor Magazine and Kraken Yachts. Well, uh, hello everybody and uh, welcome to uh, the 15th episode of the Ocean Sailor podcast. Uh, I'm here feeling quite lonely today on my own because my co-host and oppo, uh, Dick Durham, has, uh, has cleared off up to uh, the Peak District to try and get a bit of sun, I think. <laughs> that might be a bit unlikely at this time of the year in the Peak District. But he's up there munching about, so he's not down here and able to talk to uh, Adam and Chiara. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, we'll uh, go straight over to the podcast and, uh, and say hi to uh, Adam and Chiara. <laughs> Hi guys, really, really nice to uh, link up again. It's been a bloody hey, long while, you know. It's been a minute between it's been drinks. A while. And uh, yeah, it's been a, a pretty kind of incredible year. Uh, but do you realise it's a year? It's more than a year since we last met. I can't met believe home. it's been more than a year. It's like, it's, what it's, did we do last year? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Where did the time go? Yeah, it's whoosh. What was that? Oh, that was your life. And you've got to get on <laughs> yeah. with it. So come on, yeah. tell me, you know, in, in, in that time, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of an update on uh, on what Kraken's been up to in a minute. But what have you guys, yeah. you're, you're in Oz at the moment. We are. We came back. Yeah. We've, uh, we've After all of the COVID, sh- COVID schmozzle, we finally made it back to Australia three years later to see nieces and nephews and friends that we've not not seen yeah. for three years who weren't family. born prior weren't to us being yet. here uh, <laughs> wow so <laughs> lots yeah, of family time happened. happening at the moment happens, yeah. which is really happens. nice yeah. yeah yeah everything's changed back home um, but geez when, so okay so since when we last saw you we had pretty much just arrived in uh, the azores and you mm. you said to us oh you know if you uh if you want to hop on a like if you ever want the chance to see a kraken Now's your chance. Now's your chance. Yeah. And I remember that we both just like hot. We were just like, should we? And Look at each other. Should we? Should Sophie, we? Sophie Marie had just yeah just yeah. was yeah. yet right. to be handed off. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I remember after our interview in Leon C, we were talking again after a, a couple of weeks later, and we were in Ponta Delgada in the marina there yeah, as well, yeah. and there's a good airport there and we were yeah. talking and you said geez you know if you ever wanted a ride now would be the time <laughs> yeah. and bang next flight out of there exactly yep. actually what was it we had a no it was after that and then yeah never mind <laughs> we, <laughs> we had back-to-back trips actually it was a good home base to explore <laughs> yeah. the yeah. Do, do, do you know uh, the azores must have August a special 2021. yeah yeah uh, and the azores must have a special magical effect on people you know because um you i i said to you hey guys if you want to come come now and to my complete amazement you said yeah all right we'll come tomorrow and, <laughs> and then, and it's then, kind of like the reason why we come out here is to take risks i hope it wasn't one of those like throwaway invites you're like oh they'll never say yes yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh, i'll be there in the morning you're like, oh, then, oh. Yeah. oh crap <laughs> Uh, I should have factored in the Aussie element of this because Aussies are well known for exactly. turning, turning up 15 years later. And, and uh, yeah, you said I could stay at your place, you know. But no, I mean, it was, exactly. it was absolutely brilliant. Being at home. But, but what also and then happened. What, so since then, sorry, carry on. Well, but, but I was going to say, but what also happened in the Azores to me, uh, I sailed in from, uh, I came up the south, uh, came up south in the Atlantic and uh, came into the Azores. And a guy who was a school chum of mine, uh, we last saw each other when we were 15, um, oh, wow. managed to get in touch oh, via another friend. And, and I called him just as we were arriving in, uh, in the Azores. And, wow. and I said to him, you know, and we had a really great chat. And it was just like, you know, it was 50 years. 50 years wow. and we hadn't spoken to each other that's insane and i said wow. and and i said you know gary it's really great to get in touch you know what you i gotta got ask you what are you doing in the next couple of three weeks and he said well you know i've got things to do in business and i said oh you don't fancy jumping on a plane and coming out for a sale 
you know, around the Azores and perhaps we'll sail to Portugal. And he went, yeah, all right then. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, really? What is Azores? It just and, makes people just be all impromptu and oh, go on, man. Yeah, it must be. It must be some magic. It is a magical Something place. World, I, really, I must tell it you. It is a magical place. I really do. You know, and I've been to, I get talk, a lot of people talking to me about, you know, their plans and their sailing plans. Uh, and often it starts with people saying, oh, well, we want to do a circumnavigation. And I try my level best to talk people out of just trying to do a circumnavigation. And mm-hmm. I tell them my little catchphrase is, you need to sail round the world. Uh, sorry, you need to sail around the world, not round the world. And that yeah. way you get to see everywhere. It's a wonderful world. It is still a wonderful world, isn't it? It is. And, yeah. and I often use the Azores as an example because most voyaging yachtsmen treat the Azores just as a one stop, you know, yeah. and they, they, they stay there a week, provision up and yeah. if they've gone. Pit stop. Have a cu- Charge off into uh, the med. Yeah, yeah have, a, have a couple of beers in Peter's Sports Bar and, hey, yeah. I've, I've, yeah. Done, I've, Celebration I've done the done, Azores. Celebration done, that job. Yep, yeah, definitely. but I, I actually spent uh, I spent two and a half months in the Azores and thought it was absolutely oh, wow. magical. And, uh, and and obviously you guys spent a bit of time there as well. We so. did largely the same. That's we actually had yeah. to we we didn't have to, but we we were having such a good time in the Azores that we used up a sizable the lion's share of our Schengen visa allotment. Which is ninety which days is in 90 every one eighty. As you may very well know now. In um in the Azores and we had to fly out to the UK where Kiara has some family just to kind of stop the clock while we found our bearings and figured out what we were going to do. And we actually ended up just deciding to, um, to do another, the rest of the circuit and go yeah. back around down to the, uh, the Canaries and Cape Verde. And, and yeah. back to the Caribbean and, and, again. And the oh, that's, that was, that's right. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you did a complete circle, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. So I remember was, in February uh, we were chatting to you and we were just like, Hey, so do you know now we've we've like properly crossed back again? You're like, oh, what? You're back in the so you're back in the Caribbean again. <laughs> you must have been your influence because we were. Uh, I often Where think about we? what you I said about like sailing Martinique. around the world and not around the yeah. world. And lately, we've been more, yeah, more or less fixated on going and exploring the higher parts of the globe in lieu of the circumnavigation mid latitude style. Just yeah, because yeah. you miss so much, and yeah. we've just finished, we just finished one Atlantic circuit, and we're sort of gearing up for another one. It's like larger, larger concentric circles, exploring more and more oh, ambitious this. places. We're just doing a spiral. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know that's that's so such the right thing to do. You know, I mean, I I, I don't think I told you I, I was when I was sailing uh, White Dragon across the Indian Ocean, uh, got to Mauritius, and my planned route was a reunion. And then from Reunion, I was going to go to sail straight to Durban and then Cape Town. And I got mm. chatting to this guy and uh, he, who was a sailor. And he said to me, oh, you know, he said, uh, where, are you, where are you going? We're just sitting in a bar one time chatting. And mm. I told him my route. He said, oh, yeah. He said, but you can't, you can't miss out Madagascar. So I said, well, well, well what's all right? yeah, I don't really think I've got time for that. And... Um, he said, I don't, mate. He said, you, you've absolutely got to go to Madagascar. Oh. And uh, my my friend that was with me, uh, Steve and I, who was my cr- long-time crew, great buddy, great crew, we said, well, what do you think? We we better do this, haven't we? And then I did a little bit of research, and I found that there's a bay at a place called Ile Sainte-Marie in Madagascar, which would be a landfall, uh, which is also the place – where um, is mostly known for a, as a breeding ground for humpback whales. And oh, I said, wow. Look, you know, Steve, if, if we get going, we might just catch the tail end of that. And we, anyway, we did. And as we were arriving at Ile Sainte Marie, we were about maybe 10 or 15 mile off. And I can remember clear as day, I was sitting with my back to where we were going in the cockpit. Steve was on the helm. And I said, you know, the thing is, Steve, I said, uh, just hope we're not too late to, to catch those humpbacks. It'd be a magic thing. And he went, well, I don't think so. So I said, what is that? He said, well, there's one just jumped straight over there. He said, oh, and there's another God. one over there. 
<laughs> and do you know, we, on that on that first day and that first arrival in Ile Sainte Marie, we saw eighty to a hundred humpback whales. Wow! It was oh in my groups God. of ten, and you know they were doing the net fishing thing with a wow. with a bubble, and then they were breaching and jumping and stuff. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We suddenly just like, oh, maybe we shouldn't have come at peak season actually on our sailboat. And, and, <laughs> this wasn't and, and, the time when you hit the whale with white dragon. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. That that was that was after leaving Cape Town, and we still right. don't know if that was. But we then went up and over uh, Madagascar, and whereas I'd planned to go there for a two or three week diversion, we actually stayed four months. And, oh, and wow. I, it was it's totally really incredible. If you guys get the chance to sail to Madagascar, yeah. give yourself plenty of time. You you won't forget. There's a great well. there's a great place where all the because the, it's quite a few yachts do go there. There's a, yeah. there's a great place. Uh, you won't forget the name of it. It's called Nosy B, and it is really <laughs> spelled. <laughs> no, it, it, it is Nosy B, and there's this kind of <laughs> crater which was a as a crater formed by an asteroid. Uh, hit in the earth or uh, you know of, of some time ago obviously and and that's that forms the yacht club and the anchorage with a yacht club oh wow two, that two sounds con- amazing two, con- two containers and a, and a derelict bus it's actually it's the yacht club but <laughs> perfect that's my kind of spot no, I had a great time and 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 the you know really had a good time there. and that's that's what you're going to miss if you're in this goddamn hurry to keep mm. on and on. Because, of course, as you know, you get caught up in the whole requirement of seasonality to keep, yeah. you know, yeah. because typhoon and cyclone season it, you know, yep. and you've got to clear out here and then you're pushing ahead. But the way yeah. to go for me was to either drop south or drop north and come out of the typhoon area that was impending and spend six months up in that area or down in that area, letting the that typhoon season go through in the area that's vulnerable. But of course, the, the typhoons, you know, cyclones don't read all the books, and it does not no. necessarily <laughs> does, yeah. doesn't always I work out to play. They're a bit off the yeah. off the playbook we, this I year. I think <laughs> next year we're going to try and embrace a little bit of that. We're going to, you know, like after so many bloody uh, hurricane seasons in the Caribbean. And I think last year when we were in the um, nearer the Mediterranean, more so in uh, North Atlantic, I remember saying to Adam, oh, this is so good. One hurricane season where we don't need to think about hurricanes. This is amazing. Yeah. And then we went back to the Caribbean. (laughs) <laughs> and then we proceeded to then and have to think yeah, about, oh, where do we go for hurricane season? Yeah. And right yeah, now I mean, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to just go, as you said, either north or south and just get out of the way of all that. A, I mean, this yeah. plan that we've got going on is like a re, re-interception of, of what would have been last year's plan had it have gone to plan. But we had a pretty rough run in the second half of last year for various reasons, so it didn't come together for us. But yeah. now we're back on track. To yeah, do to go. do with Millie or other things? yeah, I just like I we I, I broke my foot. We both yeah. got COVID. We lost that's that's the U.S. Postal Service lost our propeller shaft for about six to eight weeks. Took a bit longer and than then I expected. And a whole bunch of other like cascading failure, not failures, but mission creep. What yeah. was going to be a three week job turned into a six month overhaul but, 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 of the boat. But, 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 but I'm confused. Surely Blue Water Cruising is just sailing around from one sandy bay to another sandy bay drinking gin and tonics. <laughs> yeah, this is what so. I was sold. Apparently I know, so. right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I thought I, I, I'd be I, drinking I, pina coladas every day, <laughs> made by my barman. I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, people ask me that, and I say, well, actually, the reality is that what you do is you sail around the world looking for the next place to fix your boat. <laughs> and, and, exactly. and you're, you're, you, you know, you go through an area that's like got very little um, mm. Western uh, infrastructure at all, and you you rock up in a place, a, a good place I can remember um, that fits this bill, and, and it will probably resonate with you. Is is a place called Kota Kinabalu, which is in Borneo, um, Malaysia. Oh, I've been there. Yeah, 
Uh, have you? All right. Well, I have. when you when you rock up in in Kota Kinabalu, which I did coming from the Philippines, where you can't get anything, um, there's three Chinese uh, kind of tool shop stroke, not really chandleries, but you know, and and I'm, I'm particularly mentioning the Chinese because they are really good often at stocking massive, massive inventories of just about everything you can think of. And of course, I've got a whole handful of sheared bolts and twisted bolts and stuff like that. <laughs> Nuts that are of a different thread to I can get anywhere else. Standard. And I thought, oh, well, just, you know, and a rock in there and, and and you show him this boat and you're thinking, well, it doesn't matter if it's a bit of, if it's different thread, I could re-thread it and I could cut the length down or something like that. And and then the guy says, how many do you want? And do you want 316 grade or 304 grade? <laughs> and, but what? And, 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 you, and you, I never wanted to leave the place. You know, it's just like the world's <laughs> biggest sweet shop. So, and that, I'm so and glad that's that someone of, else says this. <laughs> I think it's yeah, just it's, us. Yeah, what, it's really too. nice to have you say that as well. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, no, sigh of relief. No, it's it's what happens. And, and how is Millie doing? Is she still looking after <laughs> you very well? She is. She is. She's uh, after the shamozzle of last year. She's finally in a place where a lot of the big ticket items. I mean, we finished the Atlantic Circuit without incident, which is amazing. The butcher's yeah. bill was yeah. basically nil. No um, more. Nothing. No more props. No more props. No shaft, more disappearing. Uh, yeah. Disappearing no. out the back Touch of the boat. Wood. <laughs> Touch yep. wood. No more disappearing prop shaft. Not for. Th- Three um, years now. We, uh, <laughs> well, we got brilliant, all the though. way around without any serious issue. A um, couple of minor things, which were a bit of a surprise, but generally everything was fine. And then we've we've taken care of all the loose ends. And then, yeah, we've got a, a handful of sort of things that aren't even really loose ends. I'm just going to do them for good measure. And then the boat really should be in a state yeah. where we oh, can yeah. do sort of so, a multi-season, hot, like high-tempo Kind of, yeah. you know, we can stop stopping, if you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, 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 do you mean you've got a list? <laughs> oh, never, right. never, never if you have it's growing as we speak, I'm sure. If you, if you haven't, <laughs> I, at, at the worst, at the worst points after a, a long cruise in some, you know, out the way places, I often found that I had three lists, which was the mm-hmm. oh, I've really got to do this and get parts flown in list. <laughs> yeah, uh, I really yeah. should do this, but I think I can bodge it and, and get through it and the court you know one day I'd like to do that one list. day I'd love to do that yeah, yeah exactly. exactly see the last list for me is like I've seen this on another boat and I really want it on mine which yeah, is the yeah. dangerous list That's the dangerous <laughs> list yeah. So the, yeah number one list is pretty well empty number two list has got a handful left and we're basically under the number three after yeah. that. oh brilliant so it's looking good yeah she's going well oh great and and obviously I know that you've broached or, or you've breached out um and uh, have, have founded a, a new uh website and a new youtube channel yeah which this I is think more now, baby this one yeah 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 which is um which of course we had some minor discussions about the the, the particular name of the brand of which <laughs> <laughs> Which and is I, really confidential, so all I'm we can just straight, say yeah, I'm not even is, sure what I beep, am and am said not that, allowed beep, to. Said that, beep, yeah. said that, beep, said that, beep. Put yeah. it this way: you can you can judge a you can judge an endeavor by the caliber of people it pisses off. So we must have been doing something right, because uh, well, yeah, <laughs> so I mean, I, and I, <laughs> of course, I can remember the first you know conversations with you. You sent sent me the message and. Look, you know, we've been contacted by the British Admiralty and they're telling us this, this and this. Do you think it's a sort of a problem? I said, yeah, I think it's a problem. Maybe. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you might have an issue. So, yeah, so, so, I can't, we, uh... so I can't understand why you named the new one the Volvo uh, website. Or, <laughs> or, or, I didn't or know perhaps, that was taken. Or, or perhaps the Knox Johnson uh, YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's even, yeah, but uh, I mean, I, I must say, gave you know, himself a, a, a demotion. Yeah, you know, in good jest, we gave ourselves a field demotion, which is how and, we landed where we are now, the midshipmen. <laughs> and and I really like it, guys. I, I've you know I've watched some of it. I've watched all of it yet, and I've really liked the, you know, yeah, you know, I re- respond well to the. Well, look, hang on. <laughs> Sorry, not going to toe the line. Let's just tell it the way it is. Attitude that you're 
they're bringing to this oh, program. It's, it's all about and I, and you must have caused some. You must have caused a lot of waves and uh, and dissent. But you know, bleep this out. Fuck them, tell it. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, it, we look. We hope. We hope that generally, but we try not to reach any conclusion that is not based that isn't isn't provable or isn't something that they have explicitly said for us it's all about having the conversation because what really pissed me off about well it really pisses me off in general about the boating industry is that there's a lot of gatekeeping and a lot of come drudgery and you're not you're almost not allowed to have a conversation or say i'm not sure that makes sense or why did they do that like you just have to accept what you're given and like it and take it as gospel but yeah that's marketing that's marketing they're telling you it's good for this despite the fact that every all of its predecessors look nothing like it so and, and i think the, the the response from the audience is indicative of the need for this i think for a long time boat builders and marketeers and boat shows and well, just the whole industry has existed in its own, an echo chamber of its own making and the customers and the sailors were not even allowed to have yeah. a conversation or ask a question or say their opinions for fear of being put back in their box by you know, the cum drudgery of, of marine architects Whoa. or salty dogs. <laughs> or, or upsetting or our friends who also have their boats. Or like it's, it's almost taboo. Yeah to speak about a boat like you would speak about a person. It's like, these are not people. These are boats. And, yeah. and there's other people selling them and asking you to cut a very sizable check for said boat. And I don't think it's fair that you're not allowed to have an opinion on it or even well, ask a question without getting shunned or saying that's like, that shouldn't be a, a bad well, thing. Yeah, yeah but hey, head. Adam, if you remember, <laughs> and I told you this at the time, uh, the reason I found it... Um, the uh, Ocean Sailor magazine was because we couldn't get our message out mm. about how dangerous yeah. these changes to underwater profiles were, in particular, kills coming off and, I remember, and yeah. Yeah. <coughs> kills coming off and blade hung rudders and so. And the or the the journalists said to me quite openly, you know, Dick, look, we agree with everything you're doing. Um, but we can't print it because we lose too much of our advertising revenue if we do. Really? So yeah. that's absolutely what happened. I, I'm not going to oh. name names. It wouldn't be fair because, the, you know, in, in all cases, but not once that didn't happen once. That happened several times across different uh, uh, different continents. Yeah, and in and the you're end, not the first person that I've heard say that. No, yeah. no, no. There, are, look, there's, a, there's a hundred percent other people who have d used to be. I know I won't name him, but I know at least one other guy who started a whole, a whole online forum and a whole community off the back of his frustration with the, marine, lack, of the lack of honesty <laughs> and transparency in marine journalism. He wasn't able to say what he really thought for fear of upsetting the people who are holding the purse strings, and that's that's the reason that the midshipmen exists is because we don't we're not beholden to anyone except the people who are listening and even then when they listen don't listen we're going to have the conversation regardless and i think people resonate with that and they get to say their piece too because it's not an echo chamber of just andy and i we you know you'll get yeah. your moment in the sun dick as well you're more than welcome on the show to say your piece as are the people in the audience yeah i'll be very happy to do that because what you what you guys are doing is really close to my heart and and it's not anything to do, it's nothing to do with wanting to promote Kraken, but it is a massive amount to do with giving people an honest and reasoned, because you can't just say, I will do that because I think so. It's, you know, the arguments need to be reasoned, don't they? You have to, you know, like we, we laughed and joked about the, the spy hole through the bottom of the of an ML. And, <laughs> and, and, That's, that is so 50 50, that thing. Yeah, Every yeah. time I, I speak brought to people. I up in a review about the ML 16. <sighs> yeah, yeah. It's like, no, it's a I very saw it. It's a massive thing. And it was I great. saw it. Yeah. But, yeah, but there it is a conversation. Have discussion, though. Yeah. Well, we did. And, and, there is, and after that, oh, and I don't know if I've ever mentioned <laughs> this to you, after that, I realized a real big, a real big snag with that whole idea because. I don't think Amel have actually also invented clear antifoul. And if they <laughs> haven't, exactly. if they haven't yeah. invented clear uh, antifoul, 
you know and I know that in less than a month, that <laughs> spy bad. hole is going to be useless because <laughs> it's going to have growth over it. Yeah. And so, yeah, we and, and, thought about and that what, one later too. <laughs> yeah, and, and and well, people are entitled, really, when they're buying a boat and asking the serious question of the seller of that boat, they're entitled not to be sold bloody gimmicks that are there to kind of pseudo prove that their boats are blue water. But there's something I wanted to bring up with you guys, and it's taken me a long time mulling this over because I wondered, you must have wondered, why did the big names that we know about, in fact, all names these days, why did they all suddenly go in this direction? And I wonder if you've worked, if you've thought about that and worked that out, because I've got a pretty good idea why that's happened. Ah, because well, because the thing the, the the thing the thing that um, that absolutely amazed me, and that was what led to me founding Crack and Yachts, is that it wasn't one or two companies that did it. The whole lot, all of the big names that you know uh, and associate with Blue Water Cruising, uh, you can name them: there's Mel, there's Oyster, there's Contest. All of those companies suddenly went into a completely different format type of yacht, which we know isn't compatible, whatever anybody wants to tell you, with true off-grid blue water sailing. And I worked out the reason why. Because I, oh, of the, okay. I have. Of the sailing public, how what percentage do you think really are going to go and want to, even yeah, want exactly. to cross ocean? And I reckon yeah, I it's think less that's than. What it comes back to. I reckon it's less than one yeah, percent. And if I you agree. are in a company which is driven by requiring, you know, better and better uh, profitability, more growth, more sales, actually, sensibly, you don't go for the one percent. You go for the ninety-nine, don't you? Yes, yeah, totally. precisely. Yeah, and the ninety nine often brings that up as well to check me when I go. That's not a blue water boat. Rah, 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 rah. What are they doing? Look at this. Look at that. He's like, yeah, but the people who buy this half, like ninety percent of them, are never going to cross an ocean. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's might right. Do it once a year. Yeah, with well, a paid they skipper say on board, and that's that they're going to do it, and um, they end up not. My issue is not with the boats they're building. My issue, my main gripe is the the is they're still calling them yeah. the same thing. That's no. what, you can build whatever you want. You can build it, sell it, just sell it for what it is and call it what it is. And thankfully, you know, and Adam, thankfully, they there are these boats are the main, you know, dragging a lot, pulling, uh, dragging is probably the wrong word, pulling a, a lot of people into uh, sailing that otherwise wouldn't go there. Yeah. So they're sure. creating, That's very true. Uh, so they're creating a, a, a much bigger market. Um, of of people that go sailing, absolutely yeah. got yep. no problem with that at all. But don't tell people, you know, no. that they can yeah, go and cross it's ocean. For one thing, and it and it is yeah, yeah it's, exactly it is. I mean, it, yeah, we we're going to head all the way back to the first decide your purpose, aren't we? That nutshell, exactly. That's you, it. You, that, yeah. you know, that old chestnut. Rather, you you can't get away from. You have to decide yeah. your purpose. And then build the right boat for that, you know. I understand you That's did. Um, I understand you did a. Uh, I, I haven't watched it yet. I must tell you, but uh, one of your um, uh, midshipman uh, uh, videos was revolving around: uh, Can you sail across the ocean, uh, uh, across oceans, uh, mm-hmm. in a production boat? I think you yeah. named Benito in the thumbnail and said, you know, and I know you've. You went across to Italy and sailed on a Benetton, um, <laughs> yeah. and and I, I think you, and of course, the the issue really here is that you know you can take the Andy Shell approach, and you can say, which I know you don't believe and I don't believe, that ah, oh, a good seaman will get across the ocean in anything. Well, that's bullshit anyhow, as you know. We don't believe that. But you can take that approach to try and defend boats that are less well-founded than they need to be to go and be bomb-proof and sail an ocean. You can take that approach. 
Well, well his approach up. was slightly. That wasn't quite his. That was a uh, one of the other members of that podcast. That so we did a podcast with him, and it was a it was four four crews, and one of them had that ethos, and his was probably let maybe left of that left of center from that. In that, it, like it, I was surprisingly had some commonalities. He certainly he certainly is uh, not in the fixed keel camp by any means, given, you know, he's a, he's a big fan of Swan, a Swan. Yeah. Um, but he, he's a, he is a fit for a per, fit for purpose to an extent, I think, but he's very much not on board with the fixed keel thing, which is where we oh, you mean plan, integral keel. debated you mean, at length, integral keel, sorry. Yeah. Integral keel. Yeah, where yeah. we, where we debated at length. Um, but uh, he's, he's certainly, he does. He does believe that there's a hierarchy of boats. If you sorry, a spectrum of boats as opposed to a hierarchy. Because I was prepared. I, I didn't think we were going to be on the same page of that. And I was pleasantly surprised that he. Oh, okay. Was like, yeah, no, I think the same. Um, but uh, but he, he he definitely he exists. I think because well, his boats are Swan fifty eight, and for what he does, it's perfect. But not everybody w- operates with you know. 15 no not 15 maybe eight crew on board at any one time from marina to marina across an ocean with tier one maintenance and and full you know like this is a commercial cruise professional crew it's a professional operation and for that purpose that boat is okay because its bolts will be checked it will be it'll get the maintenance rigor required but for a man par voyage around the world on a shoestring or on a, a, a drawdown budget, that is not appropriate because you're one accident away from bankruptcy, um, which is where the integral keel comes in. One accident away from bankruptcy or worse. Well, yeah, right? more than yeah, yeah. or worse. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's right. In my view, as you know, I've been doing this for a long time, sailing about the world for a long time. And my view is that it's a, just a numbers game. And that eventually, yeah. if you keep doing the same thing with the same risk existing, actually, at some point in time, your name's on the top of that bloody list. And that's so for me, it isn't, you know, you, you could talk about a lot of the aspects of a Kraken and say, oh, well, is that absolutely necessary? Is that absolutely necessary? Is this absolutely necessary? And the answer to that is that some of it is some of the things that we include in the boat is not absolutely necessary. They're highly desirable, and if you don't yeah. consider that, if you don't consider the requirement uh, or or the risk that they overcome, somewhere you keep doing it enough. And I'm talking for me; it's you know best part of forty five years. Um, sometime your number comes in, and now you're in uh, the deep doo doos. And, you know, that's, well, and, and you know, I, I think I said this in the very, very first uh, uh, video that we did, which went out on uh, Sailing Millennial Falcon. Um, I think I said, well, you can, cr- you might cross a desert in a Fiat. Yeah. But you choose it, yeah. to, go, you'd choose to yeah. go in a Land Cruiser, wouldn't you? And that's yeah, exactly. it, really. Yeah. That's the I whole thing. I love comparing cars to boats because it's I more know, right? like yeah. everybody just seems to be like, oh, yeah, I know exactly about People a car. Whether you're into it. cars, whether you're not, almost everyone around the world knows something about a car and they can see whether it's suitable or not or what is good in their area or not. So it's really, it's so easy to just be like... It's a much more visceral... Exactly. You know, a Fiat versus a yeah. Land Rover. It's like, oh, yeah. clearly that's different. Whereas yeah. with yeah. boats, you put your... Like, two boats, yeah. it's got masts, it's got sails. It's harder to be like, well, that's very different to yeah. that. Yeah, and to think that's nuanced. not the same for boats, like it's just yeah. yeah well, it's, you it's need true, to learn a bit it? more then, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true, and and of course the thing is, the thing is, what is uh, the massive tsunami wave that you guys and I, but you know, you're you're engaged in that as an ongoing battle, which I love. Uh, that tsunami wave is is that you're trying to fight against is yeah but everybody builds like this these days and mm. and that's a difficulty yeah, that's because then you come to the assumption that that must be okay but of course it's not true at all and it takes mm-hmm. somebody with a bit of balls which well done for you two both of you have stood fast and 
and, and said it the way it is. And, and let oh, me no, ask... Nick on, gonna... sorry. Oh. I was going to say, on. well, the fact that you even started this podcast and your magazine as well, you know, <laughs> you also have contributed to getting the message out there. You're the first yeah, one get... who did it. Yeah, I got a bit well of skin done. in the game. Yeah, I suppose I got a bit of skin <laughs> in the game. Yeah. And, and, yeah, you know, exactly. and, and a little bit of me's given up on trying to convince people one way or the other. My main goal, I've reframed it for myself, just for my own sanity, is that you can t- you can make whatever choice you want. There is you can whatever you you're never going to convince someone to be like you, you know to change camps. You might get a few people who have, who weren't married to one or the other, but getting people to change camps is very hard. But if someone wants to go down that road, my objective is to be like, as long as you know 100% and you've had the conversation, you've been made aware of all the choices so that you won't then perpetuate that. True. Like, as long as, you, if you want to take on additional risk, fill your boots. But yeah. don't don't pretend like there isn't any. Don't pretend like you've got all the sure. variable cut variables covered. You know, that's like true. that's like, I've given yeah, up I mean, to change uh, people's uh, mind. I, I tell you, I tell you, which is what is very interesting, and uh, uh, you know, and you're, you, you know, the stuff that you put out on your um, uh, on your video YouTube channel um, definitely was part of getting that message across. Um, but I used to get asked a hell of a or told, I should say. Well, I've got you on a short. I've, I've got crackers on a short list, and I'm going to make my mm. decision. And there's this one, and there's Oyster, and there's Halberg Rassi, and there's Emil, or there's this one, or whatever. I don't, that ha- that hardly ever happens anymore. Oh, By really? the time, yeah, what? really. And, and that's, yeah, that's, that's strength to your um, publications <laughs> and, uh, and your, <laughs> uh, and, and what we've tried to do with Ocean Sailor Mag- Magazine. Very, very rarely happens. A loud anymore. message. <laughs> yeah, you know, we get, we, we get asked quite a lot about aluminium, and oh really? The, yeah. yeah, we do. And you know, I and and the conjecture by the uh, owner or, or or the prospective owner is that aluminium is stronger than fiberglass. But that's yeah, ridiculous. Can't afford to be so nebulous. No, you can't. And, and 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 there's a very easy way of answering it, which I do. I said, well, hang on, yeah. If you're going to compare five mil or six mil aluminium mm. to five or six mil fiberglass, you're right. But who mm, says yeah. you've got to use five or six mil fiberglass? We very use true. fifteen. Yeah. We use fifteen mil fiberglass, which comprising seventeen to twenty two layers. Some of which is aramid, which everybody knows as Kevlar. And it's yeah, actually yeah. it's yeah. actually bulletproof, and, and, and <laughs> yeah. it's actually bulletproof. Is aluminium bulletproof? <laughs> no, yeah, I don't so, think so. <laughs> no, and and of course, you know, it's what people get drawn into, as 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 you know, like sales messages get twisted. Here's a great one. Yeah. You know, one of the big pitches from one of the. Uh, aluminium yacht boat builders is that ah oh, well of course in a garcia all of our uh seacocks are on standpipes up above water well okay, okay that sounds fantastic doesn't it ah uh, hang on then you're going to get an airlock and you do mm. get a significant airlock why have they done that? Ah. It's nothing. It's nothing to do with them about thinking that. about safety. It's to do with you put a bronze seacock on an aluminium boat below the waterline. You ain't got it in the boat for more than about six months before it's corroded out. And this ah. is, this is, you know. So you, uh, yeah. you've got to go. Oh, hang on, hang on. Uh, let's think about What's this a little bit more. Let's message, let's though. undo yeah. this a bit further. And, yeah. and that, that's the kind of thing. It's. I find it so hard. I have found it so hard in the industry to just get a bloody straight answer. You know, totally. Yeah, you won't most of the time. Like it's pretty rare. Like you just then with a the bronze seeker, you like you won't find many people that will tell you that straight, unless they they have the the wisdom of hindsight, or they've owned one, or they're just you know particularly well experienced. But anyone who stands to gain from from 
talking about those raised seacocks, they're not going to tell you that side of the story. No, no. So there's hey. this wonderful thing. All our seacocks are above water yeah. level. It sort of sounds great, yeah. don't it? You know, but I tell yeah. you, I tell you, I tell you, one of the world's, you know, I mean, as I said, you know, the, I'll, I'll tell you the other question I get asked, but before I do, on the aluminium front, the acid test, you know, is try and find an owner that's had two aluminium boats. Ah, yeah, oh, that's an interesting, interesting. one. Because co- yeah. corrosion yeah. is such, such yeah. a problem with these boats. You know, know you, can't, you can't get paint to stick to them. And so yeah. why would you build out of a material? I mean, GRP, uh, it's it's the dream material to build a yacht it's out really of. It's is. absolutely It seems easier for me material. to fix, but that's yeah. because I don't weld. Yeah. And then a lot of the other argument is like steel. People are like, oh, yeah, steel corrodes so easily, um, which is why we use aluminium. And it's like, yeah, but doesn't aluminium oxidize, as you said? So it's like, okay, yeah, it might not corrode like steel, but it still oxidizes. It still corrodes. It still <laughs> yeah. has issues. Yeah. You've got a lot of extra considerations to take care of. And then all your bonding has to be 110%. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, you've only, you've only got to – you've only got to – uh, more alongside uh, mm. a steel boat in an alley boat, with you still do need a galvanic connection between the two. But if the boats come together at some point, the, you've just made that galvanic connection, and now you've oh, got no. raging electrolysis occurring, <laughs> and you, oh. you know the, you just don't want to be thinking that. <clears throat> so I think. Uh, uh, Ali has a god awful material to build out. Of. Less also. I'm still yeah, intrigued. Yeah. By it. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. still it's like certainly in, it's certainly in vogue at the moment. That's yeah, for sure. exactly. Right. I'm still. Yeah. Like, oh, I mean, don't get me but wrong. But that's because, well, see, I often think that the whole expedition it started. So it started with yeah. We we took we had coastal cruises, sort of some middle ground performance cruises, and then blue water cruises, and then expedition boats and everything's kind of taken i think they've taken the whole bunch and shifted them down so now yeah. what used to be perceived as a blue water sorry what used to be a blue water cruiser in my mind now is more reminiscent of a performance cruiser or a coastal cruiser and so everyone's trying to be the neck is trying to be bigger better tougher from a perception right. point of view not from a function utility point of view and so they go well what What's what's smashing through icebergs up north? Oh well, it's big steel icebreakers and aluminium yeah. expedition. You know, so that's in vogue now because everybody wants yeah. to be the everyone wants to own the boat that can go the furthest, go the hardest, and hit something that you know. But it's perception. Yeah, well, we, it's not we, utility. We, yeah, you're right. You're right. And and in response to that, we uh, launched um, what we call the Explorer version, and the Explorer oh, version. What's this? Oh yeah, yeah. We and 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 the, we use Kevlar down the front of the keel, and down the front of the, down the stem and the forefoot. That's that's we lay. That's lay, standard, though. That's standard. Like, yeah, right? standard. Sta- yeah. Standard. Yeah. Okay. But what we've done with the um, what we've done with the expedition is we have uh, brought in uh, a much wider uh, layer of aramid and doubled oh. it, um, and then. Yeah. Uh, and spread that much further around, so that um, so that the impact area you might have with ice uh, mm, okay. is, right. is is protected. <laughs> but what we've That's also done, you guys can just just like do that, like you know, being a small boat builder, you're like on the yeah, fly, you can evolve you know? on the fly. It's yeah. amazing. It's yeah, really you good. Can. Yeah. You, you can. I you mean, I feedback and you immediately implement it. But but we but the interesting bit is this. So we did that. Uh, and we also insulated it right down uh, below the waterline as well inside. Uh, and of course, fiberglass itself is already a much better insulate than uh, than mm-hmm. aluminium. Um, but anyway, we went right the way down uh, with the insulation to the um, to, uh, to the bottom of the keel, so that you know the the condensation issue is overcome. Mm. Um, right. Right. Uh, and 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 then we we also uh, came came up with the idea of putting a uh, a steel rod connecting uh, the back of the keel to oh, yeah. Uh, th- yeah. the bottom of the skeg, 
of the rudder ah, yes. so yeah. that ice can't go up and start smashing up the prop. So we've mm. got all this done. <laughs> and we've launched that. And we have a lot of interest in it. One boat. And so we, there are, by the way, there are 30 uh, Krakens on order now. It's quite... It's quite <gasps> Oh, 30. my God, that's amazing. Yeah. It, it was wow. Sold out, sold out of production for insane. four years. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Most most 50s and 58s? 50 and 58s. Any... Yeah, well, yeah, well, 50 Have you thought and about going smaller? Yes, and we're launching. we just started designing a Kraken 44 now. Seriously? And, uh, oh, my yeah, God. A Kraken 44. And it's oh, an I ideal. Will get so it's an much ideal. Attraction. It's an absolutely ideal uh, short-handed cruising boat for two people. Um, they don't. They don't have to have Australian connections or be a redhead. <laughs> and a, yeah. <laughs> you see where I'm going. <laughs> but you're, yes. you're for sure and for certain. You're going to. I'm going to get you out there when that launches and when the fifty-eight. Oh, that'd be cool. Um, but well, awesome. anyway, coming Thank back you. to it, just coming back to it. Sorry. Yeah, um, we we launched this uh, expedition uh, version and uh, explorer version, and and I asked people the question. Okay, look, and they tick it up often on the option list, and I asked them. Okay, well, you know, so can I ask you the question? Are you going to go up in the ice? <laughs> <laughs> Standard question for no, an explorer, not. yes. No, no, no. Oh. No, no, I want to go up to high I want to go up to Norway or I want to go up to Finland, but we oh, damn, God, don't, don't want to go up in the ice. And and then well in that case you definitely don't need the explorer version because <laughs> the 50 is already capable yeah. of everything yeah, you're gonna meet. And and so you're right, Adam. This is people thinking that if they do this, it will somehow lift their whole idea to a yeah. different level or their whole uh, threshold of, of strength to a different level. Well, I found that really, really interesting. I think they're a fantastic couple. Uh, we covered an awful lot of ground. That is only part one you've just seen. Uh, part two will be very, out uh, very shortly. Um, they are a stunning uh, example to us all, I think, of people that have got up and gone instead of just talked about it. And I wish them all the very best of luck uh, in their future campaigns. What I'd like you to do, uh, if you did enjoy it, is press the subscribe button and don't forget to hit notifications so that you know when the next uh, round of material is coming out, the next podcast is coming out. We've been very slow, as some of you will know, uh, in getting podcasts out. And frankly, that's just because we've been so stunningly busy uh, at Kraken and it's taken really all of my time. So apologies for that. But we, you know, we are doing a lot more again now. Um, we're doing a lot more on YouTube, so don't miss that. There's one that's going to be uh, out new on YouTube uh, pretty well as we speak. So that's a roundtable discussion, which I think uh, and hope you'll find uh, interesting. That's, you know, more about the sort of Kraken side of things. Um, we've also got a podcast coming out. Well, we've got part two coming out with Adam and Chiara, uh, the millennials. But then after that, we've uh, got in the can already um, a podcast that we did uh, with uh, David Wilkinson, uh, and you are guaranteed to find that interesting. He's one of the survivors, you could say participants, but actually is the, I was mostly correct because it was a really big ordeal of uh, reenactment of Mutiny on the Bounty, um, the Captain Blythe's voyage across the Pacific, 5,000 miles across the Pacific in an open boat. Um, if you don't find that, if you don't find that one interesting, well, I'm going to give up because uh, it had me transfixed. I think it's, uh, I think it was completely uh, crazy, uh, but he did survive, and you're certain to enjoy that. Of course, on the mutiny and the bounty, the next episode of the podcast, a Dick 
Dickie Durham will be back in the chair, uh, looking to have him back on board. We'll try and gag him as best we can at certain points. That won't be easy. That's all to say, really. Uh, this uh, this outro comes from the saloon of uh, White Dragon, so I'm having a nice time sitting on White Dragon in the uh, harbour uh, at Bodrum. It's a very nice day, and the, the se- summer season of sailing in Turkey is just beginning. Looking forward to getting out there. Thanks very much. Take care. <laughs>